You're tuning into Black and White Sports on YouTube. The no holds barred truth on sports. The main event starts. All right, Black and White Sports supporters. Well, we're going to talk about Tom Brady because we are closing in on Tom Brady becoming a Raiders minority owner. But that's really not what caught my attention in this entire article. It's the prominent voice part that caught my attention. Now, right now, of course, Tom Brady is still with Fox Sports. He's with Kevin Burkhart. He's part of that, the A team, the, the team one, they call it, that does the big games on Fox, whichever game of the week Fox has. He's the voice, right? He replaced Greg Olson. I think Tom Brady's pretty good. But I wasn't a big Greg Olson fan like so many other people, and I'm still not really understanding what the infatuation was there. Um, I like Romo. I like Aikman. I like Brady. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'm thinking that those big games should be quarter, you know, big name quarterbacks um, should call those games. I don't know what that is. But nonetheless, I think Brady's pretty good. A lot of people don't seem to care for him. Okay, that's fine. Uh, but he will have, and this caught my attention because I don't know how this is supposed to work. Now the league's already come out and said, because of his role, he's not going to be able to be in production meetings and all these things related to the broadcast booth. And my question is, well, is he going to stay in the broadcast booth? You know, is he going to stay in the broadcast booth? So he come back and play. I don't think he's going to be allowed to play and be a, a minority owner. In fact, I think the owners might have voted on that to make sure that doesn't happen, which is pretty wild because if the owners want to make money and they want interest in the league, that immediately becomes a, a, a huge story. But I've told you guys before, I felt like Tom Brady was, a, was really involved with Mark Davis in decisions. Again, that's sort of a conflict of interest between – the Raiders and Fox Sports, I would guess, because of all these other teams. And more so, the, the other teams are like, uh, you know, he works for the Raiders, so we don't want him here uh, sitting down with our coaches, hearing about game plans. That's a problem. So here we go. If Tom Brady's long pursuit of minority ownership share of the Raiders is approved as expected, as expected, they expect this to happen, the former NFL star quarterback is anticipated to have a prominent voice in the team's football opera operations. Now, that, one, that, that makes me think, maybe he's not going to stay at Fox. NFL owners will meet Tuesday in Atlanta, today, I guess. Among the items on their agenda is Brady's bid to purchase 10% of the Raiders. 24 of the 32 owners must approve the sale, but that's expected to be a formality. Quote, I think Tom is going to have a much bigger role than people think in the direction of the franchise in all areas on the football side, a league source said. Now, look, the league wants to have a big name tied to the Raiders. They're not big fans of Mark Davis. We've talked about that before. They want a Jerry Jones, Stan Kroenke, Robert Kraft type. And they don't view Mark Davis as, as being that. He's got a little of his dad in him, right? A little Alva, Al Davis rock in there. Uh, was not happy that he had to fire John Gruden, if that tells you anything. He's a bit of a rebel. They may like the fact that Tom Brady's going to be uh, a face of that franchise. Uh that, that'll be interesting. Brady and Knighthead Capital Management co-founder Tom Wagner has been in agreement with Raiders owner Mark Davis on the sale for more than a year. But the concerns over sales price and Brady's role as a game analyst on Fox Sports' lead broadcasting crew have held up the deal at the NFL Finance Committee level. The Raiders' most recent estimated value is $7.8 billion, according to CNBC. Well, if the Raiders went up for sale today, I've got to be honest with you. I don't think they're getting a dime less than $10 billion for them. I mean, the Raiders are a national brand. They're still a national brand. Even though it's been a while since they've won big, oh, man, there's Raiders fans all over the country. While no purchasing price is expected to be revealed by moving the matter to full ownership vote, 
The NFL Finance Committee is finally indicating satisfaction with the financial terms between Davis and Brady. What does that mean? Brady's 10% purchase would fall short of the 30% stake threshold to be considered a majority owner. As a result, he would not have an actual decision-making power. That will remain in the hands of Davis, who owns approximately 60% of the franchise, along with his mother, Carol, who is in her 90s. But, it's a big-ass but, but as a league source indicated, it's less about how much of the team Brady is buying and more about the Davis respect for Brady, who also owns a share of the Las Vegas Aces, Davis's WNBA franchise. Yeah, he owns a, a percentage in the Aces. That's right. He's been on the side. We've seen him courtside, right, with Mark Davis at those basketball games. Quote, it doesn't matter what percentage he owns. It's a percentage that the owner entrusts to advise and help make football decisions. Mark Davis wants him there, helping him. And you just got to wonder, uh, it was Brady involved with Devontae Adams heading out the door. I don't know. I, there, I don't think there's a, dis, a football decision made of any consequence that Tom Brady is not involved with right now with the Raiders. I believe that. Quote, and I think Mark will give him a long leash with that. Wow. According to the Raiders media guys, six other int- uh, interest owners own or interest holders own a remaining stake in the club. We're not going to name them all. Brady's 10% purchase would not solely come from the Davis family stake in the team, but would be spread out among Davis and some of the other interest holders. Brady could also be setting himself up as a franchise future owner. Yeah, let's talk about that real fast. Um, What he would be looking to do is be there in waiting when Mark Davis dies. Okay. And Carol, when she passes on, and then Mark Davis, then Brady's already built up the wealth and the equity, and ha- and that br- group is big enough that they just move in and buy the entire club at that point, right? Or the majority of the club. So, in other words, he's trying to set himself up to eventually own the thing, right? Own own the whole team. And with it being in Vegas, that's a prominent city that the NFL wants to, they want to dominate in in Vegas, right? And they, I don't think they think Mark Davis is the guy to do that. But Tom Brady is the GOAT, and him being a face of an NFL franchise, another face, right? That's something I think the league wants, and I think that's why they're willing to do this. Because it does seem like there would be a conflict with him broadcasting, but it seems like they're going to pass it anyway. Now, there's a world where 10 owners say no today, but it's very interesting, prominent voice. Now, keep in mind, and we talked about this in the past, Josh McDaniel was, was, was hired because Tom Brady was going to come play quarterback for the Raiders. And then Brady backed out. Oh, shit. Josh McDaniels really wanted to keep Jarrett Stenham. It was too late. Stenham had already been offered a bunch of money from the Broncos. So that's how you ended up with Jimmy Garoppolo was because Tom Brady backed out. Tom Brady was supposed to be quarterback of the Raiders, and my, how things could be different because, let's be real, if Tom Brady's coaching that team with all that talent, and there is a bunch of talent on the Raiders, Devontae Adams is probably still there, and the Raiders probably make the playoffs last year with Josh McDaniels. It's crazy how the NFL is. It really is. Because they're missing a quarterback. They're missing a quarterback. And Tom Brady would have been the guy. So tell me what you think, black and white sports supporters. It's going to be interesting to see how this plays out. And it's also going to be interesting because, look, Antonio Pierce had a lot of cachet with the fans. And the fans liked him, and I said, yeah, ultimately he should probably end up getting the job, even though I advocated for Jim Harbaugh because, well, I'm a Jim Harbaugh guy, and I think he should be at the top of everybody's list. But the other guy I talked about was Mike Vrabel. Vrabel and Brady are tight. 
All right. Coming from the Patriots. There's a world where Antonio Pierce doesn't survive past this year. And Mike Vrabel's the dude next year. So keep that in mind. Because if Mark Davis fully trusts Tom Brady, uh, Antonio Pierce may have a shelf life that's not very long. Tell me what you think. Peace. I'm out. Till next time. Thanks for watching the show. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Be sure to tune in next time on Black and White Sports.